Veil VR, what is it? Is this a first person shooter worth playing on MetaQuest? Let's find out. Veil seems like a game that would work for just about anyone who likes first person shooters. It has similarities to fan favorites like Call of Duty with its serious focus on headshots and realistic weapon controls. And also like Halo with its sci-fi feel and map styles. Veil has everything from free for all and team deathmatch to modes like Artifact and Scouts and Knives. And I'll explain how those work in a little bit. I'll also tell you how to get a discount later in the video. The guns work well and can be toggled from single shot to three round burst and have customization options. I wasn't concerned about figuring that out for this video, but it's certainly possible. It has more of a realistic approach to mag replacement than games like Population 1, but still is a bit more forgiving than games like Ghost of Tabor. When I first saw Veil, I thought it looked drab bland, too black and white, and this actually kept me from buying it for a while. But after playing, I found that not only is it diverse in appearance, the game is pretty fun. It starts off with a few text-based tutorials, a shooting range, a couple of coming soon aspects, and then you can get right into playing. There's not much of a learning curve if you're familiar with first-person shooters. A tip for new beginners is to push the X button for your menu to both search for a game in the lobby and to check your score mid-game. Playing is, without a doubt, fun. One thing this game does is gives you a few seconds of warm-up mode before you play. Beginners are going to enjoy this part, but I wonder if veterans find it annoying. Let me know in the comments. There are several different gaming modes. Some I absolutely love, and some are just irritating. Let's talk about some of the game modes starting with my least favorite, and later we'll get to how to get that discount. Number one, Scouts and Knives. I know, I know, you guys love it. I hate Scouts and Knives, but it seems really popular, and I I think I know why. In this mode, you only get knives, grenades, and sniper rifles. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you can't jump in Veil, except for when you're in the scouts and knives mode, when you can jump like Earth just lost its gravity. So basically, in Scouts and Knives, everyone's hopping around with single-shot, bolt-action snipers while both sides can hear each other. It's team-based, but it's hectic enough to feel like a free-for-all. I can see the appeal, but I found myself begging people not to pick it. The artifact mode was a lot of fun. Everyone races in the beginning to get the artifact. I never got it. Then you have to go set it. The other team tries to keep you from setting it. So naturally, it takes a lot of team cooperation to cover each other and stay alive. What I like most about this mode is that once someone dies, they're dead. No reviving. You watch the match from a player perspective in the viewing room after you die. But don't worry, in this mode you play it several times to acquire points. So you'll only be dead till the next round begins, which shouldn't take long. I also really like Capture the Orb. In this mode, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Both teams have a base in which there's a floating orb. The goal is to get the orb from the other base, but you also have to protect your own orb in the process. So yeah, it's basically just capture the flag, but with sci-fi glowing balls of plasma. Another great mode is Hardpoint. Hardpoint, secure the area. You have to hold the fort, so to speak, which is just a random circular spot that is chosen after the round begins. This mode is one of my favorites because the hard point changes after every round. Hard point moving. Get ready. So if your map strategy worked in the last hard point, you might have to change it up because now it's in a different spot. Hard point location revealed. Which reminds me of a major problem this game has. Spawn camping is a real issue on some of the maps. I don't know if that's fixable, but some of the smaller maps have a huge issue with the opposite team being able to just set up camp and kill you every time you spawn in with no time to react. It's not a problem with every map, but when it is an issue, you'll know it. Team Deathmatch is fun and straightforward, but these other modes add a lot of reason to keep coming back. They all take different strategies and teamwork to complete successfully. I both like and dislike the matchmaking process. It's easy to get to and you can choose to view the match, which is basically like a waiting room until there's room for you, or you can just watch it. But it seems like everyone in this game makes their own custom match. If you guys would just join other matches, the waiting process would be much quicker. There's like a dozen available games all the time, but they're all filled with like one or two people. Just join an existing match. And what's with all the picnic and free-for-all games? Those were like joining a madhouse. Oh Which is why I'm not even talking about them. I really like that this game is fast-paced. Each mode has you play the match several times to acquire points. And once you actually get into a lobby, you'll find that an hour will pass and you've played a ton of games and modes. It's pretty addicting, but you can leave at any time. The graphics are pretty good on Quest 3. I didn't have many complaints. They focused on the look of the characters, the maps, the guns. The only graphics I thought were kind of crummy were the grenade effects. 
Explosions weren't too impressive, obviously two dimensional, and the smoke bombs were weird. They work, but they don't look right. Like something you'd see on N64. The maps are great. All of these reminded me very much of Halo style play, especially my favorite artifact map. Each one has its own style. One map was in a canyon, one looks like a paintball game, and others just have their own thing going. I have yet to play all the maps as there's a pretty good number. The future of this game looks good. As I mentioned in the first part of the video, they have several spots in the lobby with coming soon. I'm really excited to see the social hub they're creating. I'm curious to see what other updates and customization options they have in the future. Speaking of customization, like I said in the beginning, I haven't played around with how that works, but I saw enough custom outfits and guns to realize that it is possible. And you can pick up other people's custom weapons after they die. The community seems pretty good. Everyone seems to be used to shooting each other in the warm-up mode and stabbing each other with knives in a friendly way, if that's possible. It's definitely a good game. That discount is in the description. 